I'm Terry Smart from Chestnut Products. Now previously we've prepared the timber as much as we can, taking it from something like this to something like this and we can see it's much smoother now but there's still some loose fibrous material that we need to deal with and we're going to do that by using a sanding sealer. Now these come in several different options but the uh, most popular one tends to be the cellulose sanding sealer and the reason for that is partly because it's so compatible you can use this with any of our products that benefit from the use of a sanding sealer and that's things like the waxes, the lacquers, including the aerosol ones and friction polish. It's very quick drying and it also is very easy to use. Now with the Celio sanding sealer, there's a sanding agent in the bottom of the tin. That does several different jobs. The first one it does is to fill the open pores of the wood so that when you put the next coating on, more of it stays on the surface. Now that's great not just for your pocket because it means you use less of the next coat but also with finishing the thinner the coat the less prone it is to being damaged so that will give you a better result. That sanding agent when you apply it stands very slightly proud of the surface. After you've put the sanding sealer on you can feel that on the surface it feels very slightly rough to the touch. That's the sanding agent and that's what you're sanding to remove when you sand a sanding sealer. And that sanding agent also acts as a lubricant to make the job easier for you. So it's doing a lot of different jobs all at once there. Now the sanding sealer, a good sanding sealer, it will mix in very easily. So you need to make sure you give it a good shake before you use it. See the test tube there, mixes in very easily no sediment left at the bottom of the, of the uh, tube and that's how it should be. So you need to give the sanding sealer a good shake before you use that. Now you can put the sanding sealer on with a cloth, brush or spray. My favourite way of putting it on in most cases is with a cloth. It's very forgiving, you can overlap it quite easily and it won't show that up. All the sanding sealers in our range are toy safe, so if you're making toys or nursery furniture you don't need to worry about that either. If I was working on a very large area, I'd probably put this on with a brush because you can get more of it on and keep it, keep it going quicker. So having sanded the wood down as fine as we can, we go with the sanding sealer. We wipe it all over the surface. Don't need too much of it much easier to put more onto the cloth and reapply it than to flood the surface. And there we go, so that's all over. Nice even coating. And this is, this is touch dry in around about 30 seconds and we can carry on with it. So while we're waiting for that to dry, here's one of the most important things you need to do. Always wipe the neck of the can when you finish using it and always be sure to put the lid back on. Wiping the neck of the can makes sure that the lid will come off easily the next time you go to use it. Putting the lid back on means that when you knock it over it doesn't go all over the floor. So put that out of the way and that's dry already, it's as quick as that. Several different options on how to sand the sanding sealer back. On this occasion I'm just going to use an abrasive and I would usually use the last abrasive that I used on the timber. And in this case that's the orange Niweb. So grab that. We'll let the lathe do the work for us. Before we do that though, we'll have a quick look under the microscope at a finish that's been sealed with the cellar sanding sealer. Now you can see how it sealed the surface and the white specks you can see, and remember those aren't really visible to the naked eye, those white specks is a sanding agent and that's what we're going to remove with the sanding action. No real pressure required here, again the lathe's doing the work for you and it's a sanding sealer, it's designed to be sanded and sands very easily. There we go. And that's now smoothed down and ready to go. And if we remember 
going back to how the eye sees the glass is by the amount of light that's reflected, the fact that we've put the sanding sealer on and smoothed that down so well, we can see a, a sheen starting to grow on there. And that's just still part of the preparation process. The better the prepared the timber is, the better prepared the surface and the sanding sealer is, the better the gloss is going to be at the end of it. You remember those white specks visible under the microscope before sanding? Well, if we have a look at a sanded piece of sapili, those white specks have been removed and we've got a beautifully smooth surface. The cellulose sanding sealer also comes in an aerosol form, pretty much the same product. It has a slightly higher solids content to compensate for the fact that it's been diluted to go through the aerosol nozzle. And this works exactly the same way as the normal cellulose sanding sealer. Uh, quick drying, easy to use, toy safe, does everything that the normal one does. Slightly easier to apply, always going to get a better finish with, a, with an aerosol, with a spray finish. Um, and ideal for those difficult and awkward things that you want to finish that you can't really get a brush in everywhere you're going with it. This is shellac sanding sealer. It's a more traditional sanding sealer based on shellac dissolved in methylated spirits and shellac being the secretion from the lac beetle. Now it has a slightly slower drying time at around about 20 minutes and that makes it ideal for architectural work, things like doors and skirtings where you want to keep a wet edge running longer. But it's also very popular for wood turning and if you use this you'd normally overcoat it with either one of our waxes or the friction polish or the French polish. Like all the other sanding sealers, it does settle out, but it mixes in very easily. Just give it a good shake, it will remix very, very quickly. And a good sanding sealer, once you've shaken it, there should be no sediment left at all at the bottom of the uh, jar or whatever you're using it from. So I'll pop that back safely and I'll give this one a shake as well. Now you can put this on with a cloth, brush, or you can spray it. My favourite way of applying this one is with a cloth on small areas, but if you're working on the big area, a brush is definitely going to be easier because you can load the brush up more and put more of it on. So we we'll load the cloth up. Again, we don't need too much of it on there. There's enough to wet the surface. Just get a little bit in the edge first. You see that going on. Now it is a clear sanding sealer. It will dry out slightly more and, and go slightly clearer, but it will have often the effect of making the timber look wet. So it can leave a slightly darker color to the piece. So there we go. That's the whole area covered very quickly, very easily. Put the lid back on and we'll leave that 20 minutes, come back to that and sand it down. So that's dry now and ready to cut back in preparation for finishing with probably a wax or maybe a polish, friction polish, French polish, something like that. So we'll start the lathe up. Nice gentle pressure, get into, the, into all the grooves being careful not to remove the sharp edge. Just get the rim there. And that's done, it's nice and smooth, ready for the next coat. The last sanding sealer I want to talk about today is the acrylic sanding sealer. This is a water-based sanding sealer and uh, it's a little bit slower drying than some of the others. It's about 20 minutes to dry if you're going to overcoat it with things like the wax or the polish. If you're going to put the acrylic lacquer over the top of it, you should leave it a couple of hours. Being water-based, there's virtually no smell at all to it uh, and no flammability problems either. So if you're unhappy with some of the more solvent-based products, this is a great alternative. It does use what's grandly called non-grain raising technology, so it doesn't raise the grain either. So it's very easy to get on with. It is a little bit finicky in the application though, so a little bit of care and attention, a little bit of patience is required, but you will get a great finish from it. As with all the other sanding sealers, you need to shake it first before you use it. 
and I'm going to apply it onto this piece here. Just, you can put it on with a cloth, you can put it on with brush, and you can spray if you have the correct facilities. I'm going to use one of our foam brushes for this. Uh, these are ideal for this purpose. Acrylics have a tendency to froth up when you apply them, but the, uh, the foam brushes reduce that to a bare minimum because there are no bristles with air trapped in them to interact with the sanding sealer. So to make my life easier, I'm going to pour some of the sanding sealer into this cup. Shouldn't need too much of it. And apply it to the, uh, the piece of timber here. So nice even coats. And you can see it's a, it's a milky liquid in, as it comes out, but once it goes on, it goes clear. and doesn't really color the wood at all. See, no frothing, no, no bubbles coming up at all with this. Quite forgiving, stays wet long enough that you can keep a wet edge running with it as you work your way around. And remember, as with all our sanding sealers, this one's completely toy safe. So if you're making uh, toys or nursery furniture, you can use any of them, including this one, before you finish. So that's nicely applied. Always important to remember that the appearance that you have when it's wet is to a large extent what it's gonna look like when it's dry for a surface. So you need to make sure there are no craters, no holes, no gaps in there. That's gone on very smoothly, absolutely no problem at all. So we're gonna leave that 20 minutes and then just come back and give it a quick finish off. So that's the acrylic sanding sealer dry, ready to sand back in preparation for putting the next coat on it. As I said, in this case, we'd probably use the acrylic lacquer in the brushing form, but we could put one of the waxes or the friction polish over the top of that quite happily. Important not to use something like the melamine lacquer because that will attack the acrylic sanding sealer. They're just not compatible. So as normal, using the last abrasive that we used on the timber, in this case, the orange nyweb. So just a quick cut back. No real effort involved, sands very easily. The acrylic sanding sealer also comes in an aerosol format, this one here. Now, this is slightly different to the one in the bottle. We use different resins in there, which give it a quicker drying time, around about 10 to 15 minutes, and a slightly harder wearing finish. And this one's ideal for using with the aerosol lacquers, the acrylic aerosols, such as the acrylic gloss lacquer, acrylic satin lacquer, ebonizing lacquer, but you can also put the waxes and the friction polish over it as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that and learned something. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be more videos coming up. We'll be going on to the next stage. As always, your comments and questions are very welcome and uh, we do answer as many of them as we can. Thanks again.